The Village in the Jungle, Leonard Wolf. The village was called Pidagama, which means the village in the jungle. It lay in the low country or plains, midway between the sea and the great mountains, which seem far away to the north to rise like a long wall straight up from the sea of trees. It was in and of the jungle. The air and smell of the jungle lay heavy upon it. The smell of hot air, of dust, and of dry and powdered leaves and sticks. Its beginning and its end was in the jungle, which stretched away from it on all sides, unbroken, north and south and east and west, to the blue line of the hills and to the sea. The jungle surrounded it, overhung it, continually pressed in upon it. It stood at the door of the houses, always ready to press in upon the compounds and open spaces, to break through the mud huts and to choke up the tracks and paths. It was only by yearly cleaning with axe and kati that it could be kept out. It was a living wall about the village, a wall which, if the axe were spared, would creep in and smother and blot out the village itself. There are people who will tell you that they have no fear of a jungle, that they know it as well as the streets of Mahanura or of their own compounds. Such people are either liars and boasters, or they are fools without understanding or feeling for things as they really are. I knew such a man once, a hunter and a trucker of game, a little man with hunched up shoulders and peering, cunning little eyes, and a small dark face all pinched and lined, for he spent his life crouching, slinking, and peering through the undergrowth and the trees. He was more silent than the leopard and more cunning than the jackal. He knew the tracks better than the doe who leads the herd. He would boast that he could see a buck downwind before it could scent him and a leopard through the thick undergrowth, undergrowth before it could see him. Why should I fear the jungle, he would say. I know it better than my own compound. A few trees and bushes and leaves and some foolish beasts. There is nothing to fear there. One day he took his axe in his hand and the sandals of deer hide to wear in thorny places and he went out to search for the shed horns of deer, which he used to sell to traders from the towns. He never returned to the village again. A month afterwards, in thick jungle, I found his bones scattered upon the ground beneath some thorn bushes, gnawed by the wild pig and the jackal, and crushed and broken by the trampling of elephants. And among his bones lay a bunch of peacock feathers that he had collected and tied together with a piece of creeper and his beetle case and the key of his house and the tattered fragments of his red cloth. In the fork of one of the thorn bushes hung his axe. The massive wooden handle had been snapped in two. I do not know how he died, but I know that he had boasted that there was no fear in the jungle. And in the end, the jungle took him.